genius for life. Coconut smoothies coming at you. Hello there. Welcome to episode 20 of 15 Minutes of Genius. This is really a show where we bring on entrepreneurs, we bring on investors, people that are in this industry of CPG, which is a very tricky industry, and they provide their knowledge and everything that they know and their experiences to the table so you can learn from it and take away something from it. Before getting into our next guest, wanted to be wanted to give a big shout out to Mark Nicholas right over here, Mark and at ManhattanBeachStudios.net. There he is over there, kind of shrouded in darkness, but this guy is the man. He is running this entire show, um, and he just tells me what to say. No, I'm just kidding. So, uh, all right. Again, Mark and at ManhattanBeachStudios.net. All right. So we're going to roll right into my guest here. He is local, so he uh, braved all the traffic to get here, and uh, not a lot of traffic these days, but he, uh, he is in the studio. He's right next to me. He is Sebastian Dreher. He is the managing partner of Dollar Ventures. Little intro on Dollar. Dollar is a global producer, marketer, and provider of technology-driven natural ingredients, ingredient systems, and integrated solutions for the food and beverage industry. I got to also mention this. Um, your company is almost as old as me. Uh, the family-owned business started over 180 years ago in Germany as a spice mill, but expanded quickly into other areas. Sebastian, how's it going? It's great. I'm, I'm pumped to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thanks for making it in from uh, from Venice, right? Yeah, the traffic was actually okay. So 30-minute drive. Um, stopped by the Whole Foods uh, on the way here. Picked up a Genius Juice. Picked up a Genius Juice and, and did my did my rounds, as I normally do. And yeah, it's great to be here. Awesome, man. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, so let's just get right into it. Um, you know, I met you through BevNet, actually. Um, and it's really funny, the sign of the times, right? This is the first time I... <laughs> I've met you several times, but I've never <laughs> met you in person. So um, that's pretty, uh, you know, that seems to be common these days. So good to finally meet you in person and have some kind of, uh, you know, human contact or, or knuckles or something like that. We got to have the human touch, right? So tell us more about how you got into CPG. You know, I know kind of the, the backstory about you, but really want you to share with everyone on the show here about how you got into CPG what you're really passionate about and also how you got invo involved with uh, Dollar Ventures. Yeah, I'm happy to do so. So um, I studied industrial engineering. So I'm by trade a mechanical engineer and did a lot of business studies too. And all of my friends in Germany, they basically work in the auto industry, right? For, for the big brands yet that we all know. And um, I always wanted to do innovation. That was, was my, my passion. And uh, innovation in the auto industry means, well, if you have 10, 15, 20 years experience as an engineer, you might be able to work in the innovation department. And um, so I took a quick detour and, and did my PhD in innovation management, a couple of data analysis, like that kind of stuff. And um, then I looked for jobs and um, there was a local company, which is called Dollar, in the city I, I studied in. And, and they were doing food and beverage. And th the great thing about them is that they do technology too. So I'm an engineer, as I said, right? Like processing of ingredients and having those mills doing powders, like processing juice. Mm -hmm. Th that, is that is heavy engineering and technology heavy. But they also have the part about products and creating new products, thinking about innovation and, and driving that. And I love that combination. I think that's, that's the greatest thing about it, thinking in products, CPG, and also having that background, and that's how I ended up in that company, and I never regretted it. I love it, and um, that ultimately brought me here. Awesome, awesome. And um, I guess they do ingredients. You know, Dollar does ingredients. Yeah. They do supply, and also that, that's one arm, and then there's another arm that also does investments and, you know, venture capital type investments. So tell us more. I know that we talked a little before the show that you're typically in either early revenue, um, pre-Series A, and also Series A. What's kind of your investment philosophy with uh with dollar and for people that are watching right that are probably going to be messaging you on linkedin <laughs> since you just you just say the word investment and you got all these brands that are like oh my god you know we need to raise money let's talk to this guy um tell us about uh the venture side of dollar and also um, what you and your team really look for in entrepreneurs 
and in brands. Okay, so we're totally going to go about 15 minutes now. But um, I let, let me just do the setup here. So Dollar is a B2B company, right? Um, we, we will never acquire brands who don't have brands. It's important to say. But it is, it is our mantra to help our customers grow. And, um, and that essentially, like venture investing is one part of it, right? Um, we, we work typically with a little bit of bigger uh, clients and, and then we do their supply chain and help them grow. And we found out that for early companies that have great concepts that we also like in our labs look at, but we can do this by ourselves. And so we, we decided to use our knowledge about products, about supply chains, about categories to invest in, in promising companies very early on. And as you know, like the bigger a company grows, it's more about marketing and sales. It's mm -hmm. not us. We're product guys. So we decided let's take a risk and invest really early on when it's, when it's mostly about the product and about the category. And that brings us to Dollar Ventures. What I'm looking for is, is company, uh, companies that can create a new category. Um, and that's important for many reasons. It's, it, it talks to the capital efficiency that you are able to achieve, but it also talks to we want to do change, we want to be innovative, and you want to help them. And that we can do that best if it's a new product, a new category that, that is being created. And that is kind of what I'm looking for. And that's one of my, my biggest um, challenges, our biggest criteria to invest in companies. And we do that early on if we have conviction, um, even though, and I'm always mentioning that, we cannot be hands-on investors. Um, others can. I mean, I'm, I'm running this my, by myself. So um, we need to look for a setup where we believe that the company can go pretty far by themselves. And we we kind of have to assess that product market fit and kind of getting that conviction early on to invest. So that's a little bit of the background story that helps. Got it. Yeah, I really like the concept where, you know, you're, you're different arms of a company and, you know, supply chain, we've talked about it on the show before, which is so vital to the quality of the product um, and also driving costs down as well. When you invest in, in brands, um, do you typically also help them get costs down and you know, looking at streamlining supply chain. And then it sounds like Dollar's basically a sourcing from all over the world at this point. So, um, but how, how are you, I guess, with brands, how are you looking, how do you help them on the supply chain side? And for those watching, like, what do you do in supply chain? How do you get your costs down? Um, where do you, how do you know where to source from? These are all big questions. And again, we'll try to keep it under the 15 minutes, but I seem to break that every single episode and it turns into 23 minutes of genius. But love to hear more about your insight on just supply chain. And first of all, before I go into this, kudos to you. I know how much work you put into your supply chain and, and how deep you are going into making sure you have the best product on market. So typically, typically we don't see that depth in, in, in companies. It only took four years. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> why, why not three, Alex? That's three. I took an extra year just to really be careful and really make sure. <laughs> yeah. No, but, but to your point, right, you need to have a point of differentiation and right. what you achieved with your supply chain is definitely one. Um, so we, we look at it. So first of all, I normally say um, if a company comes to us and, and pitches me a product and, and I know that we can do it, I'm interested because then I know there is some differentiation there and then we're looking into it. Obviously for us, it is important that there has to be a path to scalability. There, there are some products out there which are fantastic products, mm -hmm. but like you can kind of tell they will never reach that kind of scale or that kind of, of costs for the mm -hmm. product, mm -hmm. um, even though with our help, right? So ideally, ideally there is, um, there is a concept that is breaking the norms and is creating something different, whether it's a formulation or whether it's an ingredient and all of that. And, and we know by looking at it that if they reach a certain scale, we can actually help and make it shelf stable and, and helping it growing. And, and something we do, typically we look at this. So in, in early stages, the easiest way we can help is helping with the sourcing, as you said, right? Um, you, you're, you're buying ingredient A in that amount. Let us take a look at it and let, let us look at our global supply chain and see how we can help. And in the mid and long term, what we typically do and what I think we have a differentiation is something we call the compound model or, or the blend model, however you want to call it, right? Um, which essentially means that in our fa facility, we have a big facility in, in Cartersville, Georgia. Mm -hmm. We are blending um, most of the ingredients together. And then you can ship those those blends to co-packers all over mm. the country, which which takes a lot of the, the complexity away. So we want to take that complexity and, and basically want to make it easier for you. And the advantage is that then you can work with every co-packer, any co-packer that you want to do. And that is something that takes a bit of scale. You can't do this in the beginning. But as I said, ideally, we come in and try to help you sourcing and um, get a better price point. 
and then on the midterm switching you over to that model um, where where we can help you grow. And that, that doesn't have to be an investment. We do this for other companies as well, and we have investments where we can't do anything in the supply chain. That's okay too. Uh, we love the vision, love the product. So that's a little bit of the, the many things we can do. And I think that's that's actually really exciting and very interesting to do. Got it. Wow. Yeah, it's uh, so much information, but like just in listening to the story about how to do it and the fact that it's cool that you kind of cover on both ends, right? You can invest in a brand that may not even help in, in supply chain, but they have a unique product offering or unique, uh, you know, um, ingredients. But then on the other side, you also help brands that just are looking for that need guidance in supply chain. That's really cool because a lot of co-packers, um, you know, line time is, yeah. is really uh, important. And, you know, the last thing you want to get is you don't want to get upcharged by taking more time. And, and so what I've learned in running Genius Juice is really making it as convenient and streamlined as possible uh, for the co-packer to make the product so that they're happier, they're making more money, our runs are going faster, but also yield. We can also make more product in one, you know, plant rental or one session. Um, so those are things that I've learned as well. And the cool, it was really cool to hear about the pre-blending of the powders. So yeah. it almost makes me want to use more powders in our product when I hear about that technology. Um, but it's, it's funny just, you know, in the uniqueness of ingredients, uh, I think I heard it on a, on a podcast where like, you know, someone was talking about you know, whether it was genius juice or some unique ingredient, right, like pataya or something really not easy to source. The good news is no one else is doing it. The bad news is no one else is doing it, right? It goes like, it goes both ways. And so in, in running genius juice, right, it kind of bring it all full circle. And, you know, entrepreneurs that have unique ingredients, you can have awesome ingredients and you can bring it to market, but scalability is really, really key. So I guess in the minute or two left, I, you know, I can talk about this all day and I'll probably be, I'll be at fault for going over 15 minutes, but for entrepreneurs that have a really unique product, that's not very scalable, right? Like, how do you solve that? Right? Like so unique and delicious and like artisanally made, like, how do you go about getting to that next stage? You know, I mean, just your, what's your advice? Yeah, like talk to talk to people who have been in their shoes before, right? Like who who either took a product and scale it or have a conversation That's with a great us. Point. I I think you know the 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 beauty of of doing what I do and, and I love my job and have a fantastic job and talking to people like you who are so passionate about their product. Um, you know, I can take a different lens than if you talk to to uh, you know like like pure play only product guys, right? Um, so so I understand. I can take a different perspective, have a different mindset, and we can look at it and and can brainstorm together. Always happy to have those kind of conversations. But ultimately, you know, beverage is hard. It's it's hard to produce, and you have to to produce a lot of it. And and so you have to think you have to need a path to to be able to do that, uh, because most people don't want to build their own supply chain, their own factories, their own. Uh, so, so that's something you should leverage, and and having an understanding of how to do that, I think, is um, is key to 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 get all the way to go all the way. Exactly. And, you know, with Genius Juice, um, I mean, I keep, I don't usually plug my company this much because I'm already doing it enough with logos. I don't have to say anything is I think the key thing that we solved is that we were able to scale an artisanal product like coconut water and coconut meat. And, you know, and you get that passion from me that I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to put in coconut water concentrate. I yeah. don't want to put in coconut cream. I don't want to put po coconut shavings like those you can get anywhere. So the differentiation is it's really hard to do. But once you get it right, and for entrepreneurs watching with a unique product, once you get it right and scale it, it's hard for someone to come along and try to emulate that. You have a good runway to get to the market first and then grow that, and then no one can really mess with you once you have enough traction. Uh, this has been really, really great. And the Dodgers uniform too. So um, it's on the back. What's what's the name on the back? Oh tell, yeah. Tell us the story about that. It, it is funny. Of course, I have I have Justin Turner as um, as as the right. player, and m actually my nickname in in college and in high school was was Turner because that's the translation of my last uh, last name uh, in English. So um, I had to take him, even though I didn't know what what was going to happen with him, right? And that's all this controversy. But he's a great player, and I'm happy the Dodgers won. It is great to live in this beautiful city. And, and to you know share a little bit of the culture and 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 get get into it and I really enjoyed that so I figured um, 
I'm going to represent a little bit here because you have your swag is unbeatable. So I figured I have to bring, <laughs> I have to step my game up a little bit too. To yeah, level it up, level up. We got to, I think we got to get genius jerseys. That's kind of, that's our next goal, you know. I like that. Yeah, to be a good like team building thing, like the last names on the back. Love and it. and and you're from Venice, so uh, yeah, really cool area, very diverse. Hopefully you're okay through all the uh, craziness from the summer and all that. So. It is. It is certainly. It has been changing a lot. Um, but yeah, it's it's a beautiful place to be, and I'm blessed um, that I have the chance to to be there and talk to people like you and do the job I do. And um, no no complaints from my end. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, LA living. It's the best. Yeah, I've been here all my life. So, thank you again for joining us on episode 20 of 15 Minutes of Genius. You are a supply chain investor, you know, ingredient sourcing genius in and of yourself. So. <laughs> Thank you again, sir, for joining us. I appreciate it, Sebastian. Thank you for having me. Got it. All right. So that is episode 20 of 15 Minutes of Genius. Again, we were joined by Sebastian Dreher, uh, probably the biggest Dodgers fan we've ever had on the show ever. So he, he can he can take that honor. And uh, yeah, thank you again. Big plug to Manhattan Beach Studio. That's Mark and ManhattanBeachStudios.net for all your editing desires, photo, video, making making you look really beautiful on a podcast like what he's doing for me. So thank you again, and one last thing, stay genius, my friends. Genius for life. Coconut smoothies coming at you.